Hello everyone, welcome back to the 0k Ravaged 3v3 re tournament recap! I am your host Dominic, and we have... Round 2! We have Round 2, it's gonna be on Ravaged between Team Bluck and Team Unlucky. So without further ado, let's begin! So Team Bluck is... Izzeride, Dianfreund, and Firepluck, while Team Unlucky is Nuparain, Unlucky, and Space. Spaced! Or Space T. I like space tea. That sounds that sounds very advanced. I mean, all I've ever had is earth tea, but I mean space tea. That sounds the sort of thing like that's that's like a very British '60s sci-fi thing. Space tea. I mean, everything is just space everything. I think that was that was a '60s trope, if I recall correctly. Everything was about space. So anyway, space. Space being appended to everything unnecessarily aside, we have Shieldbot, air Airplane Plant, and a very forward proxy tank factory for Team Pluck. While Team Unlucky being a bit more conservative, Cloaky Factory, Shield Factory, and... Oh, Proxy Hover Factory. Okay, maybe not that conservative. Proxy Hover Factory is... I mean, Hover Factory in general we don't see very often. But it looks like... I mean, we might see some Cyclops coming out here. I mean, eventually. Dying Friend... They're the one responsible for the tank factory right now, so we'll see what they do. At this point, just, you know, standard Kodachi, Walter. Usual start. Although, ooh. Early Felon coming out here from Nupana. That's surprising. I mean, granted, they do, as a team, have a fair amount of resources coming in, but still, Early Felon without any other support is really risky. Especially considering that their opponents are on their doorstep. Diamond Friends Commander here, under a little bit of fire, but... Nothing too bad, nothing they can't deal with. But again, Dianfriend's already expanded this much. But at the same time, yeah. Oh, right, right, what am I thinking? Totally forgot, Mace! Yes, because a Mace Rush is also threatening. So they have the Mace here, the Felon in the back, where they're probably going to build some support troops for. And that's... Yeah, that's a Mace. That's actually... A, like, Maces being riot units are surprisingly good assault units, especially when they don't have a whole lot in there to deal with them. Because, I mean, when you have maces... Wait, what the... That was weird. Anyway. Maces are... Maces are quite effective at dealing with large composite units, because they are riot units. They're also fairly tough, and thus able to attack and do a reasonably decent job, but rogues do roughly count on them due to their range. So, really, it's not a huge deal. That's why I wasn't too concerned, because I thought, well, okay, yes, a mace in 1v1, proxy hovercraft, that can be very effective. In a 3v3, your opponents already have 30, 40 metal per second off the bat. They can easily build counter troops. It's not like a Mace Rush is going to be giving you that much to work with. And of course, Mace fell and combined. Interesting choice. And doing a fair bit of damage up front. But as, as it is, Team Pluck is already 10 metal per second ahead. They have forces to counter. That Felon is totally vulnerable just because they didn't have a whole lot of shields and they already burned them to kill everything. So yeah. Felon Rush has been completely destroyed. The Mace Rush has been stopped, but not destroyed. I mean, the Mace is still around, so if they need it for later, they have it. The Felon, on the other hand, is gone. And that's what I meant. There wasn't any real support force. There was no Convict. There was just no general shield forces. Like, Convicts are generally the best choice. They're fairly cheap. They have shields. They will support Felons. And, of course, they can repair. But they didn't have that. I think if they had that, they would have actually been able to deal with those incoming Ravens. Still, though... There is, there is Space D's commander up front. That's something. It's not great. But it's something for now until it dies, which will be fairly soon, to be quite honest. I mean, I appreciate the the valiantness of this assault, but yeah, Space D has... Oh, the nice dodging there. Never mind. They haven't lost their commander quite yet. Very, very focused on keeping their commander alive, mind you. But yeah, they haven't lost it yet. It's... Okay, there we go. I was about to say it. It... Almost good. Almost had it. Now it's gone. But still, there are other commanders. The storage is still around. But the main problem right now is Unlucky's commander is the only real line of defense for their proxy factory setup. And the rogues coming in here might have a bit of a problem with the daggers. But honestly, they just have to switch over to some outlaws and some bandits. And the daggers will be completely gone. I mean, heck, one bandit already taking care of most of the daggers. So this isn't really a major threat. I'm a bit curious, though. What is Dying Throne doing right now? Ah, there's the Cyclops. 
They are indeed rushing the Cyclops. They do want to win more than they want to have fun. I mentioned earlier in the chat that they thought Cyclops would be a way to win, but wouldn't be very fun. So, yeah, they made their choice. And I mean, it's a tournament. I, I get it. You make that choice when in a tournament. It's not always the best choice. Well, but it is always the best choice. I mean, if you want to win, it's the best choice. But it's not always the best choice overall, but eh, it's a tournament. The point is to win. And Unlucky still trying to go for that mace. That's their attempt to win. Which, again, I don't disagree with, because maces are a strong unit. They can quite effectively deal with large clumps of units. But the problem is the rogues are already in place. The counter force is already built. You don't build into your opponent's counter. That doesn't make any sense. Honestly, I kind of wish they built some halberds. Use that to tank all the rogue missiles. And they, three or four of those just get in, wipe out all the rogues. Like, to me, halberds would be the best choice. I see scalpels. I can kind of see scalpels. I don't really agree with scalpels, but I can kind of see the logic behind scalpels. I also see the logic behind destroying Unlucky's commander, which I think is a much more useful thing to do. Like, as far as uses of time goes, yeah, destroying Unlucky's commander. So that's two commanders down, four team Unlucky. There is still one left, so there's still free storage. New Panayana is still around, sort of. But team Pluck, actually not that ahead, all things considered. The main issue to me is the choice of units, but honestly, economically speaking, it's not like Team Unlucky is that far behind. They're like, you know, 15 metal per second, which is something, but it's not the worst thing in the world. The problem that is the worst thing in the world is this Cyclops. And that Cyclops should be able to get rid of New Panayana's Commander in, like, two seconds, at most, and there's no forces there ready to destroy it. My New Panayana's Commander's just got to get out of there and doesn't really have a chance to do so. It's an Engineer Commander has been slowed down, can't jump away, three or four more hits and that is gonna be it or not even three or four one more hit i think yeah there it is all three commanders down that's thankfully for them not the only storage they have team unlucky already had that in mind got the storage set up so they aren't going to lose any resources as a result and that's a little sneaky scythe around the back too getting rid of some of the economy coming in from team pluck of course, Team Pluck will be able to get rid of the proxy hovercraft factory, so everything built forward by Unlucky is gone. I mean, that's the thing in general. When you have the commander up front and it dies, that's generally it. There's generally not much left, and Team Unlucky thinks so, so Team Pluck takes it. Still not that uneven of a game, all things considered. It was definitely in favor of Team Pluck, but look at the army value. It's not like Team Unlucky didn't have units. It was just a matter of positioning and timing, and I think Team Unlucky did focus a little bit too much on the on the mace like on the rush strategies that work really well in 1v1 I don't know why they focused on that because that didn't work it was a neat idea but it, it didn't work also hovercraft like I said I think the hovercraft entirely was a matter of getting the mace they wanted to get the mace they wanted to rush with the mace they wanted to do a bunch of damage with the mace and that didn't work because their opponents had more than enough metal to just build up a bunch of rogues and stop it So, that was that. Next is going to be in round three. So, again, this is... Standings as they were. Was pretty... I mean, not really a whole lot of surprises here. I mean, FFC's team again won. Team Pluck, we just saw that. Oh, Team 400 won against Team Venom. And... That was Team... Okay, so Team Mumble managed to get a win for themselves. And we haven't seen Team Dude. I think we will, because I think Team Dude ends up dropping out after this point. Anyway, the next match is going to be between Team GBC and Team 400. That's... round is that? That is going to be round... Oops. Let's see. Team GBC and 400. Okay, that's round 13. So yeah, that'll be up in a couple seconds, so stay tuned.